Sea turtles eat, nest, and migrate in the Gulf of Mexico. Each of the five sea turtle species that live here, Kemp's Ridley, Green, Hawksbill, Leatherback, and Loggerhead are listed as threatened or endangered. And in 2010, these populations took a big hit. The Deepwater Horizon oil spill was the largest offshore marine oil spill in U.S. history. It spilled more than 100 million gallons of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. The oil caused injuries to a wide range of habitats and wildlife in the Gulf, including all five species of sea turtles. When the oil came to the surface, it basically contaminated their habitat and their prey. It coated their skin, it coated their eyes, their mouths. They ingested the oil, sometimes when trying to feed, and they inhaled the fumes when they come to the surface to breathe. Between 100,000 and 200,000 turtles were killed. It's hard to predict what the exact effects will be, but there were so many turtles that were lost in a very short period of time. That does have effects down the road. With funding from a settlement from BP, NOAA is working with our partners to restore the Gulf, including efforts to restore sea turtle populations. Almost all of the threats that turtles face are human-related. In the water, the primary threats are bycatch, vessel strikes, and also marine debris. Bycatch is the most significant threat to sea turtles, and as part of our restoration activities, we're working to reduce bycatch in shrimp trawls. We have two new gear monitoring teams who are working closely with the fishermen to ensure that their TEDs are installed properly. TEDs, or turtle excluder devices, were first developed in the 1960s to allow shrimp trawlers to effectively catch shrimp while allowing turtles and other large bycatch to escape the net. These shrimp trawls are dragged across the seafloor. Anything that's on or near the seafloor will be caught in this net. And this includes shrimp, fish, crabs, and sometimes sea turtles. Turtle excluder device is a grid with bars installed in the neck of a shrimp trawl. Now, each deflector bar is spaced no more than four inches apart. So, smaller species will go beyond the grid and into the cot end of the net. Anything larger than four inches, such as sea turtles, will be guided to the escape opening and out of the shrimp trough. And what we do is we cover the whole Gulf of Mexico from Brownsville, Texas, all the way to Key West, Florida. We do dockside courtesy checks. We do at-sea TED inspections. We do net shop visits, anybody involved. And an improperly installed TED can impact turtles in several ways. I would say the most common violations we come across are bar spacing, and that is due to bent bars. If you have a bent bar that makes the opening larger, you can, smaller turtles can creep through those and get caught and eventually drown. A lot of times they're quick fixes. If the captain's not comfortable with the repair, we'll step in and do the repairs ourselves. The violation that poses the greatest threat are high angles. If that grid is stood up more than 55 degrees, the water flow can pin that turtle against that grid, making it really, really hard for him to get out of the escape open. A lot has happened over the last 40 years. Some of the main gains have really revolved around reducing fishing bycatch and the uptake of TED use by the fishery reduced the mortality of turtles by the tens and tens of thousands annually. I think the future is definitely brighter for turtles.